Greetings, citizens. Just a guy's arrived. This is that which binds us. And the waitress would like to let us know that Eva Lee's party of two coming. Shit. I can't believe I'm running late. I spent way too long debating with that skeptic. I should have made him forget about me a lot sooner. How some of them manage to track me down amazes me. Is there some kind of cultish internet forum dedicated to people you can pester if you want to see magic? It's about that time of the month for an informant to stop by. I'd really hate to leave here early. That last time was really fun, though. I could see the whole city like that with her, and I'd never need anything else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of course, nothing like that'll happen if I don't hurry. There she is. Oh, someone wanted to join me? I figured you might be lonely. I pulled a chair out across from her and sit down. <sighs> Still panning a bit. Not that out of shape, really. It was just a few locks and I was sprinting, yeah. Phew. Work keep you? Yeah, yeah, a bit. So some rando came in wanting to see me work my magic and explain it to him. Like I have time to do that for every oh, skeptic. Oh, is it hot in here? Or is it just me? Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. What'd you do? After a bit, he started to piss me. Oh, give me a minute. Like he started to piss me off, so I showed him how it works. So boy did I. He won't be coming. Oh, he won't be coming back anytime soon. Man, I'm, I'm cool, right? I'm still cool, right? <sighs> I'll assume you made him forget about you rather than the stabbed him. I just shrug. Who knows? He might come back. If he found me in the first place, it's not unlikely that he'd find me again. Especially if he told anyone beforehand. Some of his friends might come by asking what I did to him. That might be a headache. But here's the hoping, eh? Can I get some water, by the way? I could really use some water. She still looks a bit skeptical at me as she tucks a bit of hair behind her hair. Indeed. I can't make everyone forget about you. You know, it's not a true problem solver, right? Huh? It's just a temporary solution that takes away one problem and adds a few more. How do you suppose? And can I get that water? Please! Well, it might depend on the situation, of course, but it seems like most of the times you're just trading off one problem for a couple of smaller ones. All right, Stefan forgot about me. What was I left with? A few people who still remembered us dating. I'm failing to see the problem here. Well, for me, the new problems weren't that big. I just told them we broke up. But what about his friends? What will he say when they ask him about me? Dots. Oh, shit. That guy you met today might go home and do nothing, having told no one. But if he did, then I just created more problems. Yep. Then what was I supposed to do? She takes a sip of her drink. I don't know. Did you just want to sit here and philosophize without coming up with answers? Huh? And now she grabs a roll and starts spreading butter on it. I thought I was supposed to be the cool one here. Gosh, she is so cool. Yeah, that sounds pretty fun. But you see where I'm getting at? Sorta. If you keep thinking of it as a problem solver, you'll just accumulate too many problems and eventually they'll overwhelm you. It's not a solver, it's a trade-off. Sometimes it's a small trade-off, sometimes it's a big trade-off. Mm. We sit in silence for a bit while we eat some complimentary bread. It's alright, but it's a bit burnt. Do anything else to say besides create many problems? Um, well, I fed a stray cat my lunch leftovers. Ah, that's not going to cause any problems for me, is it? You might be plagued by other stray cats wanting food now, but aside from that, no. Eh, doesn't seem too bad. The alley right beside the office usually has a few strays milling about. They mostly just eat trash thrown out by the pizza place on the corner. Sad. I'm surprised no one's called to pound on them. Eh. They keep away the mice that used to stay in the alley, and they're not really bothering anyone. Out where I get groceries, they have a couple of boxes set up for cats to sleep in and a food bowl for them. Makes you wonder how so many cats got homeless. 
the pound might have been full. Maybe their owners didn't want them. Maybe they were allergic to them. Oh yeah, her mom is allergic to cats, I think. Sounds kind of like you're talking from experience. How was I to know my mom was allergic? I just wanted a kitty! She looks dejectedly at the table. Talking about something that happened in middle school or sometime, I don't know. We'll get a kitty if that's what you still want. Wow, you have some plans. Oh boy. Woohoo! Oof! Oh, there's our waiter. Do you know what you want? I've barely glanced at the menu, but I nod anyway. What I want is sitting across from me, after all. The waiter comes over and we order. Ava gets some stuffed pasta thing. I wasn't really listening. I was too busy. Lost in her eyes. I'll have... I don't know. The grilled chicken looks good. For the first time since I sat down, I take a bit to look around. The place is a casual but newer style restaurant with a lot of odd lighting fixtures to add to electricity or, to add electricity or something. The marble countertop on the bar looks new, but they cheaped out a bit on the tiles. They look as old as the brickwork outside. A lot of older couples are sitting around at tables. Some are just families sitting together. There's probably only five kids in here. I look back at her. I... God, I love her. Her hair is a bit stringy from the wind today. She keeps shutting her eyes a bit, trying to fight off sleep. She has one hand against her face and the other putting us down a soup spoon, her eyes resting on the table. I want to watch. I want to reach across the table and hold her hand. Oh God, do I want to do that? But that'd probably be weird. So instead, I accidentally stare a bit too long until it's awkward. Hmm? Uh, so, how, how was your day? Give a size. Oh boy. Well, today we had a new shipment of winter clothes, so I had to bring up. They bring those boxes out from the back to get them ready to put on the shelves. Of course, there's still clothes on said shelves, so I had to move all of those onto the clearance racks or other shelves, just somewhere off to the side, really. And with Black Friday soon, most of it will be on clearance anyway. Which means more clothes gone, so we'll have to stock the shelves a hundred more times before Christmas. She sighs, rotating her wrists a bit. Your day sounded that your day sounded a lot better. Uh, you could always see for yourself. What, pretend to be your secretary for a day? How does a paycheck and three full course meals sound? Three? That'd be a long work day. I'd make it worth your while. Alright, I'm a bit interested. What does your typical day look like? Hmm. Well, I get up around 8, shower, eat, all that. I hate that I feel like that's getting up really late now, god, anyway. And then, around 9, I leave my apartment. After some traffic, I get to my office by 9.30, and by 9.30 I'm open for business until around 6 or so. Just depends on what's needed for any day. Like today, huh? Like today. Sometimes I've got clients who want to, who make me stay a little later, or need to come by at a later time. It just depends on the day. How often do you get other customers? Bail bonds clients daily. Other clients about once, sometimes twice or thrice a week. It's usually only once a week, but there are some outlier weeks. Of course. What did the last other client want, besides the one from today? Not much. She was about five foot three, brown hair. Did not like her boss. Oh, I think her name was... Marlicia. Get a lot of girls like me? In looks, yes. In mind, no. She had a boss who kept getting too close and she wanted out. Originally, she came in to just learn a bit more before going through with it. Her plan was to make him forget about her after she turned in her resignation, but I talked her into waiting to turn her resignation. They're waiting to turn in her resignation afterwards. Why? Well, I. If you hadn't stormed out the other day, I would have told you to watch the news as a demonstration. To watch him make a fool of himself. She went into work as usual the day after she went through with it. She talked to co workers, even did a bit of work. During her lunch break, it was finally time. She went to turn in her letter of resignation while he was with a few colleagues. 
Suffice to say, it didn't go well. For him, that is. The way she talked about him, I figured him for the boisterous type, but he was in disbelief instead. The boisterous type? What do you mean? Some people, especially middle-aged guys, get furious when confronted in this type of situation. It's not a normal situation at all, so everyone reacts differently. You know, this whole, everyone around you knows this person except you and claims that you've always known them? For some people, it's straight out of a horror movie. Not unlike, say, someone creeping into your room at night, hmm? I've heard some people straight up go along with it all. They have absolutely no memory of the person, but everyone else does, so surely they're the one at fault, right? I'd like to see a video of some of those. <laughs> how do you know how he acted? Were you hiding behind the water cooler or something? No, she came back and told me. Gosh, who do you think I am, psychic? Oh, oh. Quite a few of my clients do that, actually. They stop by a few days or a few weeks later, telling me how it went. Same was for her. She came back a couple of days later, telling me how he took it. Her old boss was in disbelief. His co-workers, of course, knew her, but he had no idea who she was and why she was resigning. At first, he thought it was a joke that some random woman thought it'd be funny to try to resign from a place she didn't work at. But then his colleagues started giving her words of encouragement, hoping it the best for her, and that she'd been great to work with. So he figured it was an elaborate prank they were all pulling on him that they were all in on. Of course, his co-workers didn't think it was that funny. One of them took his resignation while the other two took him off to the side. I hear he's been put on antipsychotic meds. Meds he doesn't need. Eh, he'll be off them soon enough after some therapy. But why? Uh-oh. Why not just leave him there completely oblivious? Uh, well... That is a good question, actually. I'm kind of wondering about that myself. I mean, it worked out for the other example, but this one kind of seems... mean-spirited? I don't know. Then again, it just seems to be more of a previous character in this run-through. Very interesting indeed! We'll have to find out more, and why, specifically, next time, because until then, I'm afraid that this is... Farewell!